proudly we hail. Hello from Hollywood. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to the premiere performance of your War Department program, Proudly We Hail. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we present the distinguished actor, Mr. Clark Gable, as the star of our play, First Choice, by Tom Petty, music by Eddie Skrivanek. Duke O'Hara has fought his way across the tracks to the top of the heap, and tonight he's ready for the payoff, his party's nomination for governor. Here he is waiting for Mrs. O'Hara in the room she calls his study. Hello? Hello, Duke. Yeah, Jim, what's on your mind? We're in a jam, fellow. The opposition's gonna spring a scandal on us. Okay, if they want to play rough, I'm ready. Put it on ice. I'm throwing a party for the big boys, and you're invited. But no business. Just the announcement of my nomination. I can't tell you about this on the phone, Duke. It's too hot. Then send me a telegram and spell my name right. Bye. Jim Dare, the guy's as nervous as a hummingbird. And he's my campaign manager. Hey, Gilly, where are you? Uh, you call, boss? Of course I called you. Where's that band I hired? Uh, they're here, boss. Well, where's Mrs. O'Hara? We've got to get this party started. Duke O'Hara, you don't have to shout. I'm right here. Oh, darling, you're as nervous as a cat. Me? Nervous? Mm-hmm. Mm. All dressed up. What a pretty wife I've married. Pretty as a stick of peppermint candy. Get out, Gilly. I got everything I want right here. Everything you want, Duke. Well, most everything, baby. Everything except a little job down at the Capitol. Are you sure you want it, dear? As sure as Sunday, Nell. It's in my blood. I've done a lot of fighting and sweating to get inside of that job. I want the power that goes with it for myself and the social rigmarole for you. Being up there is something I've dreamed about since I was a kid. A kid from the wrong side of town. You're a strange person, Duke. Strange? What's so strange about wanting to be governor? I didn't mean that. It's, it's just that you're so sure. Oh, never mind. Oh, but I do mind. They're handing me the job on a silver platter. Don't you want to be the governor's lady? I just want to be with you, Duke. Always. But sometimes I... Oh, I'm acting like a schoolgirl. <laughs> hey, who's nervous now? What's bothering you, baby? Oh, Duke, I love you so much. I never dreamed I'd find it difficult to tell you anything. Darling, I, I believe I'm afraid of you. Afraid of me, mm -hmm. Nell? Why, I've been scared to death of you ever since that morning you came into my office to interview me. I never have figured out how I got the courage to ask you to marry me. I just had to, or you would have spilled all my secrets in your newspaper. Now I'm trying to tell you my secret, and I don't know how to begin. Oh, so my girl's been holding out on me. Spill it, baby, and I'll have the guy hanged when I get to be governor. Oh, it isn't that kind of a secret, dear. There never has and never will be any other man for me. There better not be. Let's forget the yesterdays. And all the tomorrows, too. Yeah, but not about tonight, baby. Not about tonight. Come here. Oh, oh Duke. Hey, Duke, Duke! Yeah, what do you mean, crashing in here? You're, you're a fine campaign manager, breaking up the first minute I've had alone with my wife in a week. But I told you I had to see you. Well, you men, please stop shouting. I'll be back, Duke. And don't be talking with Mr. Dare too long. Say, what's the matter with you anyhow, Jim? Can't you let me enjoy myself on the biggest night in my life, Duke? How long had you known Mrs. O'Hara before you married her? Oh, a couple of weeks, I guess. Now, wait a minute. What's all this got to do with my record? It isn't your record that's causing trouble. It's hers. What? You... Hey, 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 Duke, hey, stop it, fella. Hey. hey, what are you trying to tell me, mister? I'm trying to tell you that you can't accept that nomination tonight. You can't ever be governor. I don't know what the deal is, Jim, but I'm going to be governor of this state this year, and no living man is going to stop me. A woman is going to stop you. She's your wife. She's crossed you up, Duke. Jim, if I hadn't lived with you and fought with you and trusted you for years, I'd... I'd kill you. I'd rather die than do this to you, Duke, but she's got a prison record. I've seen it. So that's what she was trying to tell me a minute ago, hmm? That's what it was all about. All right, let's have it, straight and fast. Well, 
She did a stretch in the penitentiary, shoplifting and forgery. Judge Benedict set her up, called herself Inez Agnew. You're lying, Jim. She was in there a couple of weeks when she escaped, but she's going to have to go back. It was a three-year stretch, Duke. They know where she is, huh? They know. I don't suppose there's ever been a governor whose wife was serving time in the pen. I'm sorry, Duke. Skip it. You've done your job, Jim. I'll take over from here on out. Beat it. I got to think. Our play will continue immediately following a message from Dr. Harold W. Dodds, president of Princeton University, who says... Skill in technology is important, but it alone will not save us in the atomic age. We must apply the knowledge which the social sciences, art, literature, ethics, and philosophy supply if we are to preserve the traditional moral values, which alone will hold the world together. This means that America can and must encourage the broadest possible educational program for all its youth. I have been glad to see that the Congress has extended the educational privileges of the GI Bill of Rights to young men who enlist in the regular army today. These privileges make it possible for many ambitious young men who might not be able to afford higher education now to get such education as a reward for their important service in the regular army. This program should be the means of not only helping to give this country the kind of a regular army it requires, but also will help to improve the educational standards of our future generation, an absolutely necessary achievement if we are to keep pace with the developments of the atomic age. And now we continue with our play, First Choice, starring Mr. Clark Gable. This is a lovely party, Mrs. O'Hara. Thank you. Uh, the boss wants to see you in his study, ma'am. Thank you, Gilly. Why, it's stuffy in here. Duke. Duke, what's happened to you? You're as pale as death. I'm all right. Close the door. Oh, you poor darling. Duke, you know. Yes, I know. Oh, it just means that we can't be together for a little while. I'm going to be all right. Is that all it means to you? Oh, don't be so tragic, darling. It just means that I can't stay up late and that I can't lead the Grand March with you. I, I can't dance with you for a long time. The doctor said... The I, doctor? What doctor? Well, Dr. Stewart, of course. He said I'd be fine after a couple of months' rest, but he warned me not to dance. Said the exertion might bring on a heart attack. How long have you known this, Nell? Just this afternoon, when the reports came from the hospital. Well, doctors can be wrong. You don't look ill. Oh, I'm going to get well fast. I must if I'm going to be the governor's lady. Have you told anyone else about, about your condition? Of course not. I could hardly tell you. You're going to dance with me tonight. You're not ill. Not that sick. Duke, I can't. The doctor warned me. Well, you have to take a chance. It'll be the most important, the finest thing you ever did for me. Is, that Im is it that important to you, as important as my life? I'm going to be governor, Nell. And you're going to lead the march with me tonight if it's the last thing you ever do. Uh, turn me loose. You're hurting my arm. Please. More guests are arriving. We must meet them. Will you help me fasten my necklace, please? Yeah. Duke, Duke, you're choking me. Duke, what's happened to you? Have you seen Mr. O'Hara? Uh, he's right over there, Miss Nell. I'll get him for you. Thank you, Gilly. Ready for the Grand March now? Duke, I'm going to have to go to my room. I feel faint. Nonsense. You're going to stay right here and dance with me. I've never seen you looking better, nor prettier, if I may say so. I don't understand you. You've changed. You're cruel. Maybe. Yes, Nell, I've changed. But why, Duke? Why? Don't you know? No, I don't know. Maybe it's ambition. Wanting so desperately to be governor. I can understand that. I can understand everything. Except this sudden hatred. That you'd like to see me dead. Oh, no. No, now, don't say that. Oh, I must have been insane. I'm ready to dance with you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I all know why we're here, so let's line up for the Grand March. You ready, Duke? Let it go, boys. Stop it. Stop the music. Well, huh? This isn't on the program, but I've got something to say to all of you, and when I've finished, I hope you'll go on having fun. 
I've been a fool tonight. I put ambition ahead of love. Pride and ambition almost caused me to commit. But that's all over now. I want everyone in this state to know that my wife means more to me than pride or political ambition. She comes first. Mm. Nell. Oh, she's fainted, Mrs. O'Hare. Get back. I'll take care of her. Gilly, telephone Dr. Stewart. Oh, darling, please don't leave me now. Oh, everything went dark, Duke. I'm so ashamed. No, no, nothing matters now, baby. You're back with me. Go ahead with the party, Jim. I'm going to take Mrs. O'Hara to her room. There, there, baby. Everything's going to be okay. Oh, I feel all right now. I must have fainted from happiness. You do love me, don't you? Yes, Nell. You aren't ashamed of me. No, baby. I'll never be ashamed of you. I don't care if you do have to go back to jail. Go back to jail? What on earth are you talking about? You'll never have to pretend again. We'll face this together. Face what, Duke? I don't understand. That three-year prison sentence is waiting for you. Darling, that's the most absurd thing I've ever heard you say. Oh, now, Nell, let's face it. Judge ben Benedict did send you up for shoplifting. You did escape. But, Duke, dear, that was a newspaper stunt. Uh, darling, how long have you been thinking of me as a shoplifter, an escaped convict? Jim told me about it just before the party. Well, I'll tell you more about it. My paper got Judge Benedict to sentence me under an assumed name so that I could be in a cell with one of our most notorious women thieves. I found out all about the entire gang. Well, then all you did was to aid in the public service. Yes, darling. Oh, <laughs> that's all I wanted to know. When they spring their big scandal, we'll laugh them right out of the state. And I'll laugh the loudest. Now give me a kiss and get back downstairs to our guests. I'll be waiting for you, darling. <laughs> okay, baby. I'm going down and tell them you've just elected me governor. And there's the final curtain of our play starring Mr. Clark Gable. And now, General Joseph W. Stilwell from San Francisco. Unless you are willing to take desperate risks, you must give us the means during the humdrum years of peace to keep up our service schools where doctrine is developed and our test units where it is tried out. You must be generous with funds for research and development so that we and not some other power will be able to produce the surprises. You must maintain a corps of trained officers capable of handling a possible expansion of our army to a hundred times its peacetime strength and sufficient to carry on the training of whatever components may be authorized. All this can be done with an establishment of modest size. We can keep our doctrine and our methods abreast of the times. We can be sure of our weapons. We can organize our supplies. But one vital factor we cannot furnish or improvise. That factor is time. On two occasions now, in 1917 and in 1941, we have entered a major contest with plenty of warning and time for preparation. We had allies to engage the enemy until we could bring our strength to bear. The next time, we cannot count on this advantage. The blow can fall without warning, and if we are to survive attack, we must be ready when it begins. This is no bugaboo. It is a serious statement whose truth can be demonstrated and it behooves us to give it the most careful consideration. Yes, what General Stilwell says does warrant careful consideration, just as the opportunity which America's new army offers to all eligible young men deserves careful consideration. You want a good opportunity for a fine career, don't you? Why not check the facts at your army recruiting station? Our thanks to Mr. Clark Gable, General Stilwell, and Dr. Dodds, who have appeared on this program. Proudly we hail, we'll come to you again over this station next week. Listen in. <laughs>